All right, well, welcome everyone this evening. I'm glad to have everybody here. And uh, I'll call the March City Council meeting for the City of West Richland to order. Uh, and before we uh, call the roll, I'll ask Jessica, who is sitting in for Stephanie this evening. Thank you, Jessica. Appreciate you coming in this evening. Read the uh, hybrid meeting ground rules, and then she'll call the roll. All right. Tonight's meeting will be held in person with the virtual meeting component. If you are participating virtually, please make sure the name shown at the bottom of your video is the same that you would like the mayor to use. Let me turn myself down here. You can, oh, that might be too much. You can change this by right clicking on your video view and selecting rename. Audience members present in the council chambers will be called upon first during public comment periods. Those participating remotely should virtually raise your hand if you wish to speak. To virtually raise your hand, click on participants, then click on raise hand. If you are participating by phone, only press asterisk nine to raise your hand. Please limit your comments to three minutes. All right, we have Brent Gary. Here. Richard Bloom. Fred Brink. Here. David Fetto. Here. May Hayes. Here. Kate Moran. Present. John Smart. Here. Ken Stoker. Here. Do we have a motion to excuse? Um, he, he didn't ask to be excused. Oh, okay. Best of my knowledge, she was uh, in town and attending or uh, intended to attend. Okay. Uh, council, the uh, thank you, uh, Jessica. Council, the agenda is before you. Are there any changes to the agenda this evening? Seeing none, may I have a motion to approve the agenda as presented? I move to approve the agenda as presented. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. And then I'll ask uh, Council Member Hayes if you'll lead us in Pledge of Allegiance this evening. Thank you. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Council Member Hayes. Appreciate it. And our presentations this evening, we have the 2023 fourth quarter financial presentation to be presented by our finance director, Aaron Gwynn. So, Aaron, if you would, please. Thank you, Mayor Gary. Good evening, uh, Council and citizens. Uh, this evening, I'm presenting the 2023 fourth quarter financial report. I'll start with an overview and economic update followed by specific financial information regarding the general fund followed by other funds. Uh, for the first overview of the economic slide, uh, we'll start with unemployment, which has increased uh, to 5.9% for Benton County. Uh, this is up from 4.4% in my third quarter report, um, but still uh, down from the beginning of the year. Uh, another economic indicator uh, we continue to monitor is inflation. Uh, one of the measures used is the consumer price index, uh, which nationally has a 12 month percentage increase of 3.4% when comparing December of 22 to August of, or December of 23. Uh, Seattle uh, Metro is higher at 4.4% when comparing the same period. Uh, both are slightly lower than my third re quarter report, so trending in the correct direction. Uh, locally, we look out at the city's building activity. Single family permits issued through the fourth quarter are slightly less than half of what they were in the previous year. Um, however, multifamily through fourth quarter has remained significant. In terms of revenue generated, the city received 27% less building permit revenue in the fourth quarter. Uh, this slide is another view of single family home permits. Uh, this shows the years in comparison along the green line showing the increase in valuation. Uh, this is a good example that demonstrates the volatility of new construction. Uh, you can see from the data that permits have been on a downward trend since 2021. Uh, the next several slides will take a look at details regarding the general fund. Uh, this slide shows where the money comes from in terms of budget. 
Um, you can see most of general fund revenue is generated in the form of taxes at 68%. Uh, the primary sources of taxes are sales tax, property tax, and utility tax. Uh, here's a view of the general fund uh, revenues collected. The city collected 29% less revenue in 2023 compared to 2022. A large part of this decrease is the ARPA money that was transferred in the last three quarters of 22, um, which that was about 4.2 million. That was a one-time cost. Um, so sales tax revenue, building permit revenue, charges for services, which is primarily the plan review fee, saw decreases of 9%, 27%, and 7% respectively. <clears throat> when reviewing uh, trends, it's important to look at how we're doing compared to what was budgeted. Uh, in addition to the year-to-year -year changes. Uh, this slide compares the budget to what was collected for fourth quarter uh, in the year of 2023. The general fund collected approximately 51% uh, of budgeted revenues. Uh, we're looking to have collected at least 50% in this category. Uh, so the city is on target for the biennium, but please take into consideration uh, during our mid-biennial budget review, uh, we did and budget amendment. We updated our projections uh, as we should have, but we did a pretty fair, pretty large reduction of our expected revenues. So that is a, a good um, number now. Um, these next two slides look at sales tax revenue uh, in the general fund. As shown in previous slides, sales tax decreased 9% compared to the prior year. Um, this is another look that compares the different business sectors. Uh, the retail sector uh, decreased 15% and represents 36% of our overall uh, sales tax collected by the city. And construction is the other larger sector, which also decreased 3% and represents 27% of the sales tax collected. Another major revenue source uh, in the general fund is utility taxes and overall utility tax revenue increased 9% compared to the previous year. Uh, here's another look at utility tax. Um, there were increases in all categories, uh, which include telephone, cable, gas, electric, water, sewer, stormwater, and solid waste. Uh, the increases uh, are mainly contributed to weather, new development, and uh, rate increases and um, yeah, new development from previous years. Another major general fund revenue source is property tax, which increased 5% compared to the same period the prior year. The majority of property tax is collected in the second and fourth quarters. Uh, where are we here? Um, Back one, I think you need to go back one. There you go. Okay, uh, so where does your money go? Most expenses in the general fund are for public safety at 41%. Um, this is a change from previous bu bu uh, budget cycles, primarily due to a large transfer out uh, for the Well 3 project, as well as supporting the street fund. Uh, here's another look by department on where your money goes. Uh, total general fund expenditures were 39% of what was budgeted. As a general guide, we're looking for 50% or less. Uh, the city has special revenue funds for streets, park impact, criminal justice, and library. Uh, this graph displays the major revenue sources for each fund. The street fund and park impact fund each saw a decrease. Um, the Park Impact Fund has a direct correlation with building activity, which has been slowing. In addition to the build ac building activity slowing, uh, we have the two larger subdivisions uh, that have mitigation agreements with the plan to build a park in lieu of paying park impact fees. Uh, also remaining fairly flat are the fuel taxes, um, which are, have been slightly declining for several periods. Um, so this slide is a picture of the 
special revenue expenditures. Uh, street funds saw an increase mostly due to some equipment purchases as well as a street light Rome retrofit project. Uh, the park impact fund remained flat. Criminal justice has seen an increase primarily due to increased operating costs and hiring of an additional administrative per, um, professional that utilizes the public safety tax funds. Uh, the library fund has seen a slight decrease, and this is due to the renegotiated contract with Mid-Columbia. Uh, next, we'll look at our capital project funds. This slide outlines the funds and their purpose. Fund 301, this fund holds uh, state route 224 project, uh, as well as uh, real estate excise tax and REIT 1. Fund 302 is REIT 2, funds primarily uh, for pavement preservation. This houses projects like the North 62nd uh, Preservation Project. Fund 315, this is primarily where the bond funds for the new police station construction. Uh, this project uh, is wrapping up. Fund 321, this was the capital project to construct Cooperative Way, uh, which utilized a curb grant and loan funds, rural county capital funds, and Benton Rural Electric Association uh, contributions. Uh, this project and fund purpose was completed at the end of 2023. Uh, fund 355. Transportation Improvement Program is where we account for several transportation improvement projects, including the Bombing Range Road Keene Intersection Modification. For revenues, the project funds, there wasn't a lot of activity for our police fund or the cooperative way. They're both uh, projects are winding down. Uh, also, you'll notice the extremely large budget for Fund 301 in the REIT. Um, this is for the State Route 224 project that has started, but we anticipated carrying this project forward for several years. Uh, revenues for 301 and Fund 302 are from real estate excise tax. We saw a 37% decrease in collection compared to fourth quarter of last year. Compared to budget, the city is on target for revenue projections. Um, this form of revenue has a direct correlation with the sale of uh, real property. Revenues for Fund 355 are the traffic impact fees. Uh, the city saw increases in collections uh, compared to the fourth quarter last year. Um, uh, city, uh, a big portion of that, the big gray area you'll see was the receiving funds from the city of Richland uh, for the Badger Mountain development tra traffic mitigation which accounted for more than 50% of our um, anticipated revenue. Uh, this graph shows expenditures for capital projects for the fourth quarter, both, as I've said, both police facility and cooperative way projects are winding down and don't have significant expenditures. Uh, Fund 355 had uh, the Bombing Range Road Keene Intersection Project and expenditures in 301 uh, were for a State Route 224 project, which is just starting to pick up. Uh, these last few slides take a closer look at our utility funds for revenue. Water collections increased 5%. Uh, there are approximately uh, 5,724 water utility counts that were billed at the end of December. Uh, sewer collections increased 3%, primarily due to the increase in the number of new residences uh, this last year. Here's an image of the irrigation revenue, which has remained flat uh, for 23. Um, this graph shows stormwater, which is up 2% compared to uh, the prior year. And the last utility revenue is solid waste collections was up 12%, primarily due to rate increases and the additional residential developments coming on board. Uh, this final slide is a view of utility fund expenditures. For the most part, uh, they saw operating cost increases due to higher costs of materials and labor. Um, for the solid waste fund, increased due to the contracted services uh, in the stormwater fund, the purchase of the new street sweeper, 
uh, was a significant purchase and both water and sewer system development funds are due to the State Route 224 project and replacing the water and sewer lines prior to the construction of the road. And that's a conclusion. Thank you, Aaron. Appreciate that. Council, any questions of Aaron in regards to a report this evening? Council Member Moran. Thank you. Yes, I was just wondering, um, I I love the graphs that we're able to get in these. Are we going to be get, getting those in our emails? Okay, thanks. And I see that we have uh, Council Member Bloom uh, is joined us virtually and has his hand raised. Jessica, would you unmute Council Member Bloom? Yeah, he should be in. I'm, I'm unmuted now. Uh, one question, the uh, just or well, reflection, we were basically 9% down from last year, um, but we're right on tune with the budget. 51% of what we expected for the biennium, is that correct, as far as sales tax? Uh, that is correct, but that is after doing a large reduction in our mid biennial budget review in November. Oh, okay. Well, I just want to reflect uh, Transit uh, did their evaluation. They ended up being 2% under their um, uh, their budgeted amount for the year. Um, and what more importantly was the dramatic drop in sales tax in December, which doesn't bode well for the economy overall uh, with Christmas uh, being that sales tax base. So I just want to reflect those two pieces. Um, sorry, I'm not there, but I got carried away um, caring for my alpaca. Uh, say other things, but anyway, take care. I'm here. Thank you, sir. All right, anyone else? Nope. Seeing none. Okay, thank you, Aaron. Appreciate it. Okay, then we'll, that moves us to the consent agenda this evening, which consists of payment of the bills, approve the minutes of the regular meeting March 5th, 2024, and the special meeting February 27th of 2024. Resolution 1824, setting a public hearing date to consider a petition for a frontage improvement waiver for Everett Street. Resolution 1924, authorizing the mayor to execute a third amendment and restate restated interlocal agreement for Benton County Emergency Services. Resolution 2024, surplus property. Motion to accept the police facility storage building project as complete. Motion authorizing license agreement with Greater Richland Little League. Motion authorizing amendment number two to engineering services contract for SR 224 Red Mountain Vicinity Improvement Project with PBS. Motion authorizing the mayor to execute engineering services contract with JUB regarding the sewer extension project from the I plant to the Richland School District properties. Motion to authorize West Richland Chief of Police to sign a contract for the law enforcement pursuit technology grant with the Washington State Department of Commerce. Is there anyone in the audience who'd like to speak to the consent agenda this evening? I see no one in house. If you're virtual and like to speak to the consent agenda, please raise your virtual hand or star nine if you're by phone to be recognized. Jessica, I see no one by remote virtual this evening. Do you? Nope. Thank you. Okay, well, moving on, we'll... Uh, so first opportunity for citizen public comment for items that are not on the agenda. If you'd like to address council, please come to the podium, state your name and address for the record, and you'll limit your comments to three minutes, please. And also do remember that uh, council cannot respond to any questions during any comment period. So if you'd like to make comment this evening. You need a motion and vote for the consent agenda still, sir. Better work on that first, should we? May I have a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented? So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Somebody asked me if we're going to get through this tonight quickly, and I think it was your fault, right? Richard Bloom has his hand raised again. Did you want me to? Richard? Yeah. Thank you. Councilman Bloom? Yeah, I'm going to abstain since I have an item on that agenda. Okay, so note that uh, Councilman Bloom has abstained from the uh, voting this evening. 
for the consent agenda, yes. Okay. Uh, now we're moving on to that citizen public comment. If you'd like to address council, please come to the podium and state your name and address for the record for items that are not on the agenda. Limit your comments to three minutes, please. My name is Dan Evans. I'm at 3505 Clear Lake Court. Um, I'm also I'm president of Greater Rich and Little League, so I want to thank you for putting us on your consent agenda tonight. Um, I want to make you guys aware, if you're not aware, we've been doing a lot of work up at the fields, uh, renovating a couple of them, um, replacing the infields uh, with new sod, new dirt. It's looking fantastic out there. Um, our opening ceremonies are coming up. They're Monday, April, I guess that'd be 8th. So you guys are all invited. Like you guys come out, we've got 460 something kids playing out there this year. So it's going to be a fantastic season. Uh, so again, I wanted to say thank you and, and invite you out guys to come see a few games. Thanks. Now, since I wasn't supposed to let you make comment before on the items that were on the consent agenda, I'm going to make you stay to the rest of the meeting and then you can, you can come up here again. But yes, and in this particular case, we do appreciate everything that the Greater Richland Little League does and uh, everything that they do for the community and the kids. Uh, great partners. And we, we thank you very much for everything that you do do out there. Mr. Mayor, Sir? I didn't catch the time on that. Could you repeat date and time for that? Monday the 8th. Never got it. All right, perfect. Anyone else this evening? Okay. Anybody virtually like to make public comment? I don't Raise see your it. virtual hand or star nine. I see no one. Jessica, do you? Nope. Go ahead and move on then. For uh, ordinances, resolutions, motions, and public hearings, item 8A and B are public hearing and a resolution to approve a frontage improvement waiver for the property on Kennedy Road. I'll ask Public Works Director Oscar Slade to present staff report this evening. Thank you, Mayor. So what you have before you is a request to, for a waiver for improvements to Kennedy Road. The property owner on uh, January 8th, 2024, submitted a petition for a frontage waiver. Uh, this property is in the city's urban growth boundary, but currently in Benton County, where they're looking to do a short plat. Uh, it's coming before you because it accesses Kennedy Road, which is a city street, and triggers frontage improvements that way. Um, at the uh, February 20th, City Council passed a resolution setting tonight as a public hearing on the on the matter. In your packet is information about the property as far as Kennedy Road being a minor arterial with the nearest uh, frontage improvements being more than um, 1,100 feet to the east at the intersection of Bomber Range, Dallas, and Kennedy. Um, the parcel is address is commonly known as 4870 Kennedy Road. Again, it has a single existing single family residence on it, and the family is going through a short plat with Benton County. Um, staffs looked at the existing road right away on Kennedy Road, which is currently 100 feet wide. Uh, this is the old state highway that used to come uh, into the Tri-Cities. So it's plenty of uh, road right away and has sufficient width for future widening and improvements without additional dedication with the short plat through the county. Um, so staff's recommending, uh, since there aren't improvements uh, are more than 1,100 feet away, is that a waiver be granted for improvements. Um, and because there's a sufficient right-of-way, there's no additional right-of-way dedication, but do ask for waiver of future rights to an LED if they were. So an LED was formed for those improvements in the future. Thank you, Roscoe. So I'll open the public hearing at 624. If you'd like to make comment to this agenda item, please come to the podium, state your name and address for the record. I see no one in house. We'll ask anybody virtually who would like to make comment to this agenda item. Raise your virtual hand or star nine to be recognized. I see no one virtually. Jessica, do you? Nope. I'll close the public hearing 
at 625 and uh, resolution 2124 regarding a roadway frontage improvement waiver for Kennedy Road. Council, may I have a motion, please? I move to pass resolution 21-24 granting a frontage improvement waiver for frontage improvements to a portion of the Kennedy Road with conditions as noted. Second. Second, any questions of Roscoe that haven't been addressed in the staff report? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like, sign. Okay. Council Member Bloom, I didn't hear you on this one. This wasn't yours. Did you vote yes, sir? He raised his hand for a second and then took it away. But... All right, okay. Well, we'll consider his hand raised as I agree. Uh, Councilman Blue, un unmute him, please. Mm -hmm. Councilman Bloom, can you unmute yourself? There you go. Was that an aye? Yeah, that was an aye to the to approve it. But I, that's why I raised my hand. I couldn't say. <laughs> okay, I'll watch for your hand then in the future. Here. Okay, I was trying to find a thumbs up and thumbs down. Yeah, I sure, believe me. <laughs> okay. Then we're going to go ahead and move on. Items 8C and D are a public hearing and a resolution to approve a frontage waiver improvement uh, for property on South 50th Avenue. I'll have Public Works Director Slade present your staff report again soon. So, Council, another uh, waiver in front of you. This is for lot uh, 162 of Section 6. Um, the property owner submitted a petition on January 23rd of this year. Uh, council adopted a resolution on February 20th, uh, setting a public hearing for March 19th. Um, the property was properly posted. Notices were sent out to property within 660 feet of tonight's meeting. Um, I did not receive any comments in advance uh, on this one. Uh, South 50th Avenue is classified as a local roadway, has been previously improved to city roadway standards between Paradise and Norma. The nearest frontage improvements to South 50th Avenue in relationship to this property is nearly 660 feet to the south at the intersection of South 50th Avenue and Norma Street. Uh, lot 162 is in Section 6 is currently a vacant lot. It has a pending short plat that would divide the parcel in half east-west uh, into two lots. Um, in your packet is Ordinance 3119 that outlines the Section 6 local roadway plans that shows South 50th Avenue as a planned city street from Norma North to a cul-de-sac at the southeast corner of Lot 162. And then from that point, it's a planned public fire apparatus access road meeting the international fire codes that goes along their east boundary of Lot 162. Uh, staff's reviewed this and recommends granting a frontage waiver with the following conditions. Uh, the property property owner waiving all rights to protest a future local improvement district for improvements to South 50th Avenue. Two, property owner dedicate the city West Richland on the face of the plat road right away for the proposed cul-de-sac street. This affects the Southeast corner of their property only. Uh, three, construct improvements to South 50th Avenue along the Eastern boundary of lot 162 to meet the international fire code. Um, Appendix D, uh, this is a 26 foot wide uh, gravel access road would meet the international fire code for that with a turnaround and four construct improvements to South 50th Avenue from the Southern boundary of lot 62 to Norma street, where it's a city street is there to make sure that section, uh, also meets, uh, current, uh, international fire code. And with that, that's staff's recommending approval with those conditions. Thank you, Roscoe. With that, I'll open the public hearing at 629. If you'd like to speak to this agenda item, please come to the podium, state your name and address for the record. I see no one in house. Uh, virtually star nine or raise your virtual hand to be recognized to make public comment on this item. I see no one virtually. Jessica, do you? No. Watching for council members' hand here shortly. Resolution 2224 regarding roadway frontage improvement waiver for South 50th Avenue. Council, do have a motion, please? I move to pass resolution 22 24, granting a frontage improvement waiver for frontage improvements to a portion of South 50th Avenue with conditions as noted. Second. <laughs> a motion and a second. Any questions of Roscoe? 
Council Member Smart. Yeah, so I'm looking at the uh, at the road dedication map and the dotted line between 162 and 161. That's the fire access. And with that, is that um, so? This resolution is to uh, it's, uh, come up with does that already exist i guess is what i'm trying to say and okay. if so is it on both properties already or would it just be on lot 162 and third you said something about a turnaround at the end is that the north end or is that or is that the cul-de-sac in the southeast corner thanks can you get all that <laughs> so what's existing there it's paved from norma uh and south 50th so that intersection it's meet city standards Right there at this, it'd be the southwest corner of lot 193. From that point going north to uh, the southeast corner of 162 is gravel. Okay. It's been improved in the past. Um, part of the condition is making sure that section it still meets international fire code. So if it's wide enough currently, then they won't have to do anything. Um, if not, they'll have to add some gravel and widen that out. Um, the dedication is in the southeast corner to so that cul-de-sac as a city street in the future if an led was formed could be constructed but going north there's looks like there's a dirt trail that somebody's driven through but it's it's not, not doesn't meet fire code and so as part of the short plat they'll be constructing that um within those easements typically it's split down the middle between yeah. the two lots is what we try to do but there may be uh structures improvements or something there that we usually try to be neighborly and work around okay. um, with the, with the owner. So they will construct that to the Northeast corner and then put a turnaround, uh, meet the fire. Turn around at the Northeast corner. And what's the diameter of the cul-de-sac and the turnaround? Do you know? For a city street, uh, that's why we need a 60 foot radius. It's a pretty large, but uh, for the international fire code, there will be more like a hammerhead turnaround where it's 30 okay. feet by 60 like a t yeah at the top. exactly okay yeah so yep, that I doesn't have as much impact appreciate that thank you what else okay all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed like sign thank you council okay and we're going to go ahead and move on to items 8 e and f and 8 g or a public hearing and an ordinance and a resolution to approve an access and utility easement vacation for the application vacation is 001-2024, and I'll ask Community Development Director Eric Mendenhall to present the staff report to see him. Eric? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. That, but should I, did you want to close that one? Close the public hearing on that one? We already did. Oh, you did? Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, so, Mayor, members of the council, before you this evening is... Uh, an ordinance and resolution. So for public access easements, you have an ordinance and for utility easement act, uh, they're a resolution to vacate those. So I've put it all into one staff report for efficiency purposes. Hopefully it makes sense. Uh, it's all for the same piece of property. Um, property owner submitted an application to vacate the entirety of the access easement on the property on the eastern side of the property and a portion of the utility easement that's on the eastern side of the property. Um, <clears throat> staff or a council uh, passed resolution um, on February 20th to set the public hearing for this evening. Um, and we sent out notice to property owners and posted the site. So um, staff's reviewed this, Public Works has reviewed it, and, and they've given approval for it. Um, the property is within existing development, the properties to the north that could have used that access, access off of Scotland Court. So there is no need for them to have access uh, further for this piece of, through this piece of property. Um, the, there's a utility easement or a utility line that runs along that eastern within the, the proposed retained portion. Um, it does a little L shape and dog legs up there at the north to T back into the existing line to the north. So that's why it's shaped that way. Um, so staff's recommending that council vacate the entirety of the access easement and the portion is illustrated in the exhibit map for the 
utility easement and retain um, that portion 12 feet along the eastern property line and then it expands to the north so that can tie into the northern property. Thank you, Rick. With that, we'll go ahead and open the public hearing at 635. If anybody would like to speak to this agenda item, please come to the podium, state your name and address for the record. I see no one in house. We'll ask anybody virtually star nine or raise your virtual hand to be recognized. I see no one virtually. Jessica, do you? No. No one will go ahead and close that public hearing at 635. Uh, Ordinance 0624 Access Easement Vacation, Vacation 001-2024. Council, do I have a motion? I move to pass Ordinance 06-24, authorizing the vacation of a 33-foot access easement for file VACA-001-2024. Do we also want to include the second part normally? We'll, do we? we'll roll right to that here in a second. Okay. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. A motion and a second. Second. And <laughs> then uh, any questions of uh, Eric in regards to staff reports this evening that have not already been answered? Seeing no one, may I, uh, may I, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carried unanimous. Thank you. And then it's moving it on to resolution 2324 utility easement vacation for vacation 001 2024. Do I have a motion, please? I move to pass resolution 23-24, authorizing the vacation of a portion of the 33-foot utility easement for file VACA-001-2024. Motion to have a second. 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 Any questions, Eric? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Motion carries unanimous. Thank you, Council. Moving on to item 8H is an ordinance amending the 23-24 biennial budget. Uh, Finance Director Aaron Glenn will present staff report this evening. Aaron? Hey, thank you, Mayor Geary. Um, this evening, I'm presenting the ninth budget amendment for the 23-24 biennial budget. Uh, this amendment contains five items in four separate funds. The first two items are in the general fund for two police-related grant items. Uh, the first is a federal pass-through grant from Washington Traffic Safety Commission uh, in the amount of $3,000 to purchase a LIDAR unit. Uh, the second is a state grant from Washington State Department of Commerce as part of the Law Enforcement Pursuit Technology Grant in the amount of $42,536 uh, to purchase two non-armed, non-armored drones for law enforcement assistance. The third item in this amendment is to appropriate $30,000 from the 401 Water Sewer Fund Operating Fund Ending Fund Balance. Uh, the funds will be used to decommission a well that was previously unknown to the city and discovered when demolishing the abandoned booster pump station building on Ironton Drive. Uh, the next item is to appropriate $100,000 from Ending Fund Balance in the Water System Development Fund 441. Uh, these funds will be used to purchase back uh, 1.3 acres of land from Benton REA for a well site. Uh, Benton REA is selling the property back to the city at the same cost they purchased it for in 2021. Uh, the final item is in the 442 Sewer System Development Fund uh, for the sewer extension project that will go from the I plant to uh, Richland School District. Um, this is for an interlocal agreement previously approved uh, earlier in tonight's, uh, in tonight's consent agenda. This amendment recognizes revenue from the school district and 7HA family in the total amount of $26,666 and appropriates $40,000 for the project. Staff recommends passing the ordinance. Uh, this amendment authorizes an increase in the 23-24 appropriations in the amount of $215,536 and an increase in total resources in the amount of $72,202 
bringing the revised budget to a total of $145,558,530. Thank you, Aaron. Is there anyone in the audience who'd like to speak to this agenda item this evening? Come to podium, state your name and address for the record. I see no one in the house. Anybody virtually, star nine, or raise your virtual hand to be recognized? I see no one virtually. Nope. With that, uh, Council, may I have a motion, please? I move to pass Ordinance 0724, amending the City of West Richland 2023-2024 biennium budget. Second. Motion and a second. Any questions of Jessica this evening that weren't answered in a staff report? Or excuse me, Aaron, different Jessica. <laughs> It was a few years. That was a few years ago. <laughs> Mayor Pro Tem Brink. Um, I think it is great that we. Oh, let me push the button. Sorry about that. Um, I think it's great that we've gotten a grant for uh, drone technology uh, in order to employ that with law enforcement. I've seen demonstrations of that and its utility. Um, my only question is this, uh, Chief or Aaron, uh, training. Uh, is training covered with this as well, or is that another expense? Yeah, so currently we have a certified pilot in our department that actually trains commercial pilots. And so I'm utilizing his skills, and we're gonna, we are gonna—we have ordered some books, low cost, um, and he's going to get them certified through the systems in which is required. Thank you very much, Chief. Council Member Smart? Yeah, I have a question about the 442 sewer system. Um, the uh, the description is that we recognize anticipated contributions from Richland School District and 7HA Family LLC, the amount of $26,666, and then also uh, appropriates $40,000 in expenditures. I'm just, this is for phase one of the sewer extension project. I was just curious if if there's a, um, maybe I, I may have missed it in a previous proposal, uh, what the total is anticipated to be for this sewer, for this sewer extension. Don't know. That's, Don't why, know. that's why we're doing it in phases. So the first phase is to do uh, the analysis, the planning, and get about 30% designed so we can get an engineer's estimate on what the, um, to finish the design and to actually construct the sewer extension and allow all three parties, if at that point they want to move forward, then it would come back as an amendment to council with those numbers known. Okay, so the phase one is really sort of the study portion and then uh, not engineering yet, but just the pre, sort of pre take a look and see they, how much- They'll get 30% cost. design. Okay, all right, thank you, appreciate that. Anyone else? Okay. All of Mr. Well, Richard Bloom has a comment. Councilman Bloom? Yeah, I just want to jump in and piggyback on the, the comment about training. Um, uh, Chief, I would suggest you contact Angela down at Mosquito Control. Um, they're doing the same thing, and they're, they're, they've been training drone operators for a couple of years now. So uh, you might want to, you know, partner up in some way. Uh, I think... Uh, they're they're getting a lot of lessons learned. Of course, their drones are a lot bigger than what you got. But uh, anyway, so uh, that that might be a a useful partnership. Okay, thank you. I've I've talked with uh, the mosquito people. They were out here doing the uh, pond, and they have big drone, four motors, big pellet bucket, and two pilots. Uh, Pretty impressive project that they've got. They've got a full blown truck with uh, batteries and load. It's pretty pretty interesting. So, let me reach out. Sounds good, Mayor. Um, so Coates, Commander Coates is going to certify, I believe, four pilots in our department. And so, yeah, we could definitely talk to them about training and stuff in the future. And from your drone experience, I'm not going to recommend you be one of those pilots. So, I believe there's still a few missing out there. And, the acreage you have. that was personal that was not the city i'm sorry <laughs> okay all in favor say aye aye, aye. opposed like sign motion carries unanimous thank you council 
Uh, no one finished the business this evening or new business, so this is an opportunity for uh, public comment. Uh, if you'd like to address council, please come to the podium, state your name and address for the record, and please limit your comments to three minutes. Kevin Shoemaker, 1708 Elmwood Avenue. Thank you for an opportunity to speak. Uh, this article comes from CNN Health, released on March 13th, titled, a significant number of U.S. 12th graders report using Delta H products, study says, and it may be a public health concern. Um, I will just pick out parts because it's too long to read in three minutes. Delta H THC uh, is one of more than 100 chemical compounds found in the cannabis sativa plant. It is an isomer or chemical cousin of sorts to Delta 9 THC, the molecule that creates a high when someone ingests cannabis. Delta-9 is the most abundant form of THC in weed and is responsible for most of the psychoactive effects. Delta-8 acts on the brain the same way, but it is less potent and has fewer legal restrictions. Unlike uh, with weed, there are no age restrictions for buying Delta-8 in most states where the product is legal. What we, quote, what we hadn't known prior to this study was to what extent are these products reaching teens which was a concern because they weren't being comprehensively comprehensively regulated, said study author Dr. Adam Leventhal, executive director of the USC Institute for Addiction Science. Delta-8 comes in many forms that may appeal to kids, like gummies, chocolate cookies, vaping cartridges, sodas, and even breakfast cereals. Delta-8 is also easily accessible since it is sold in convenience stores, gas stations, and online, rather than only at age-restricted dispensaries. Um, the study, the researchers used data from the Monitoring the Future in School survey. Uh, in the sample, 2,186 12th grader students out of that many, 11.4% said they had used Delta H THC in the past year, even though it was illegal for teens. And 30.4% of the participants reported using it. Um, Quote again from Dr. Leventhal, some of the concerns based on the underlying biology would be, of course, addiction, like what we see with marijuana, some of the neurodevelopmental changes that can happen because the adolescent brain is still forming, and exposure to intoxicating substances can interfere with proper development of the brain pathways that support cognition and emotion regulation. So uh, this started back in 2019. Washington State did have Delta-8 um, it was in convenience stores, it was in gummies, and kids were able to buy it. They passed a law that went into effect in July of 2023, meaning that now only Delta-8 or anything containing THC can only be sold at licensed dispensaries in Washington State, which is good news. Um, what I would like to, I guess, bring to the attention of the council is um, my two concerns are, one, as often happens with government, this took four and a half years to address a problem that was basically unregulated. And the other concern I have is related to the earlier statement saying that there are more than 100 chemical compounds found in the cannabis sativa plant. Uh, Delta 10 is also an isomer that has been produced um, that you can sell as a product. So there's more than 100. There's a lot of money at stake here. That's why these isomers come out, because uh, Delta-9 is what one would take to get the high. These other isomers don't. Uh, am I up on time? Oh. Okay. Yeah. So I just wanted to bring up that study. It's on CNN Health. You can read it if you'd like. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else this evening? Dan Ritchie, 508 Austin Drive. Thank you for the opportunity to address you tonight. Um, in keeping with the last presentation, um, this is not your grandma's pot anymore. 100% is a common number. You can get uh, THC content all the way up there. It's not the uh, 5, 10, 20% that, you know, when I was a you know, young one trying not to smoke it, <laughs> um, you know, that uh, uh, we used to see. This is a different animal. But that's not why I came to speak tonight. What I wanted to bring to your attention is two studies that WSU has done uh, just around down the road here a ways. And uh, what they address in this particular study, and it's continuing to this day, um, what they address here is the proximity of marijuana stores 
and advertisements, frequency of advertisements to the influence that has on kids. Okay. And so, you know, we heard uh, Mr. Weaver stand here one day and tell us, well, if you don't think they're going to get out, going to, they're already getting it and all this kind of thing. Well, okay. I'm not willing to throw the towel in. I'm not willing to say I can't stop it. So, Hey, just to hell with the kids and let them go. No. And so to that end, um, I just wanted to draw your attention to these studies. I'm, I'm getting long winded here. Advertising and location of cannabis retailers influence adolescents intentions to use marijuana. And that's a WSU study. And I'll just highlight a couple of points that I pulled out of here. Uh, conducted a survey, 13, 17 year olds in Washington state to find out how marijuana advertising and location of retailers influence their intentions to use the drugs. Their research so shows regular <clears throat> regular exposure to marijuana advertising on storefronts, billboards, retailer websites, and other locations increase like likelihood of adolescents using uh, marijuana. Now, what we're looking at here with the stores would be about a three and a half to four mile span between them. Correct me if I'm wrong here, but I believe that number is three and a half to four miles. And what they say in this study, they talk about the fact that five miles is kind of the limit. Okay. So what our kids are going to be doing is they're going to be exposed to it. They're going to be exposed to it on a regular basis. I mean, I look at where we're at right here and we've got several uh, middle schools as well as um, uh, elementary schools, let alone high schools that we hope to get here one of these days. Um, so that's the point I wanted to make. I've left the, uh, I asked uh, uh, Jessica to go ahead and give you copies of this. And I just want to leave you with a couple of questions. What about the future development in West Richland? So we're going to plunk these pot stores down. And do you think I want to put my store next to one? And the answer is no. No. What about future schools? Now we're going to be shoehorning ourselves into a corner here, painting ourselves into a corner with regards to where we can and can't. All right. What about future home building? Do you want to have a home? Do you want to have, does a home builder want to build next to a pot store? And the last question I'll ask you here is, uh, uh, how about the Chamber of Commerce? How are they going to reflect on, you know, how are they going to place businesses next to pot stores? So I'll leave you with think about that. Please take a look at these uh, uh, WSU research studies that were done and they're continuing. Thank you. Anyone else this evening in the house? Seeing no one, I'll ask virtually to raise your virtual hand or star nine if you're by phone to be recognized for the citizen public comment. I see no one virtually. Jessica, do you? No. Uh, moving on to staff council announcements and reports. If uh, staff members have something, we'll go ahead and start with uh, Chief Grego. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, Council. Tonight, I want to share an update on a recent uh, crime uh, officer successfully resolved. This happened in the month of February. I haven't talked about it with you guys, but I just want to let you know the update on this incident. The team attempted to stop a car of an individual inside uh, that they knew had a Department of Corrections warrant out of Oregon. During the attempt, the traffic stop, the vehicle had, in question had fled from the officers. However, our officers exercised discretion and refrained from pursuit, prioritizing, prioritizing the safety of the public. Subsequently, the vehicle was abandoned in Richland where narcotics were seen inside. The team, team initiated an evidence tow, laying the groundwork for a search warrant. Upon execution of the search warrant, um, they uncovered drugs, two guns, one, one that was reported stolen, and a pipe bomb. The Richland bomb squad promptly responded, securing the pipe bomb and neutralizing the threat. Since the incident, the driver was taken into custody in Oregon, and I want to let you know that the U.S. Marshals are considering taking the case on for prosecution. Uh, this is a testament of exceptional work that our team does, ensuring the safety of the community by swiftly removing such dangers from the street. I'm going to shift here a little bit because that's the end of that story, unless anybody has any questions. No? Okay. Um, I also want to let you know that I'm delighted to say that Rebecca is doing very well in her training, our part-time code enforcement officer. Um, she fits really well in with the team, and things are moving forward on that in a positive manner. So um, unless you have any questions, that's all I had tonight. Thank you, Chief. Appreciate it. Roscoe? Got, a, got several things tonight. Uh, first, uh, the utility committee. We have a meeting next Tuesday, March 26th. There'll be a general discussion on 
A to Z on what's going on in public works. They'll get pro projects, programs, and uh, operation updates, question and answer. It's been a while since we've had that, so get them up to date on everything that's going on. Um, getting questions on several projects, so I'll just kind of go through. Previously, we awarded the South 38th Roadway Project. Um, that project, we, we haven't had a pre-con. It's been awarded, but we haven't had the pre-con to get a start date yet. Once we have that, we'll make that uh, publicly known. We put a lot of flexibility in that, allowing the contractor to decide when he wants his 20-day window to do the work, but it has to be completed before August 16th. So as soon as we know that, we'll let you know. Same thing with the waterline replacement project on Chelan and Arlington. It's been awarded. And again, that contract has flexibility in it, and we haven't set a construction start date, but the work has to be completed by August 29th for that one. The other projects that are uh, that will be going out to bid in April and coming to council at the May 7th meeting is our Candy Mountain Pathway Keen Road Crossing Project. Uh, this is going to put some curb gutter and sidewalk there at Watkins and Kennedy, so make that safe to cross there. Uh, if we get good bits, we'll maybe even get one of those rectangular uh, rapid flashing beacons there, but that's an ad alternate. Uh, the other one that's out, same time frame, is North Lake, East Lake repairs, that corner of the road. There's a couple hundred feet that's about, I think there's more patches on potholes than actual original road. So that'll get done with some storm drainage work so it doesn't puddle. Um, we're also going to take the opportunity to go put a center line stripe. That roadway is narrow through there, 18 to 20 feet wide. Uh, it's old part of town, and so we're going to put a center line stripe to help people stay on their side of the road when they're uh, driving through that windy section of East Lake to South Lake. Uh, and lastly is our 2024 pavement preservation project and citywide striping. We put the two together, so you're going to see uh, this summer a lot of crack sealing around town on the arterials. Um, and then we're going to do an AR chip, which is the same material we did seven years ago on Bomb Range and Keene. Uh, we're going to do that on Paradise from Bomb and Range to, I think, Onyx. Um, and then that sort section of Belmont, the older part of Belmont on the north end, uh, just south of Paradise. So those are going to be coming to council in May. Uh, the other thing I wanted to report on is our legislative efforts in Olympia. I haven't purposely haven't been reporting in the public because I didn't want to jinx it. Um, but we've been doing, having a lot of meetings with the legislatures. Now that the legislation session's over and these bills are getting signed by the governor, uh, the city was successful with the aid of Benton REA and their lobbyist Pat Dunn and Jennifer Ziegler in securing another $2.2 uh, million for our SR224 Red Mountain project. Um, given the state of the, uh, the state's transportation system, it was a miracle that we got anything. We got everything we asked for and a budget proviso that uh, basically restricts DOT from changing the scope of the work of the project uh, and adding more scope with no money for it. So uh, basically locks us in and on schedule, <laughs> on the revised schedule to be out to bid uh, this time next year is what we're shooting for if, if everything goes well. Right away plans are supposed to be approved at the end of the month and we'll start that. So the project continues to move forward. And lastly, uh, busy uh, I got elected to continue as the chair of the Ben Franklin Council of Government Transportation Advisory Committee. Uh, so West Richland is well representative with uh, myself chairing the TAC and Councilman Moran as the vice chair on the board. So we're uh, West Richland's well representative there. Um, I also was elected as a legislative chair uh, for the Ben Franklin Walla Walla Good Roads Association. Uh, our relationships we have with our 8th, 16th district kind of I made eye contact. So there I go. I got voted for that one. Um, and then lastly, uh, this last year in 2023, I was appointed by AWC on a legislative work group dealing with how local agencies could deliver DOT projects and was asked recently to serve on a new legislative work group that deals with transportation project delivery methods. So I'll be working with AWC on, on that uh, later this year. So that was it. Thank you, Vasco, and thanks for uh, chairing and being involved with these extracurricular activities outside your day-to-day -day business because uh, when you're at the table, it makes a big difference when uh, when we're dealing with people in, in, in Olympia and, and these other uh, entities. So thank you very much in your spare time. Uh, I'm sure you'll fill it as necessary. Eric. Thank you, Mayor. Members of the council, just wanted to give you a report. So as of this morning, 
our consultant emailed me and said that we have 1,060 surveys completed. So that's exciting uh, that we surpassed the thousand mark. Um, so I'm hoping to have more to report back on that, but we, we are halfway through the month. We still have a couple more weeks yet for people to go out and fill out their surveys. So hopefully we'll see more of that. I believe I reported at the last council meeting with just over 900. So we've seen maybe 100 over the last little bit. So we've seen most of them completed right away. I wouldn't expect a whole lot more for the rest of this month, but I'm still hopeful that we'll get maybe another 100 or so completed. And and um, and I'll be reporting back on that once it's done. Um, I do want to uh, let you also know that at the next council meeting, there will be a resolution coming before you regarding the advisory vote. Um, so we'll be having that discussion at the next council meeting. And to, I'm sure Mayor Jessica or Stephanie's already mentioned, but the first meeting in April um, is canceled due to uh, spring, spring break. break. Just to be honest, um, so whose break it is is it the kids or is it the adults, you know. <laughs> so, um, anyway, so that's that'll be coming in the second meet or the one meeting, the second meeting in April or second scheduled meeting for April. Thank you, Eric. You have a question? So, so, just to be clear, you're planning to have the text proposal at that meeting for the ballot, correct? Thank you. That was one of my questions, so I don't have to put my card up now. <laughs> all right, you're all good. Okay, council, any comments this evening? Reports? Council Member Stoker? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, first off, uh, when uh, Mr. Ritchie was speaking about and telling us about these studies that he's given us some uh, printouts for, <clears throat> I thought that came to mind was what, 20, 30 years ago, all the governments in our country were really putting the hammer on uh, tobacco companies and their advertisements and how prevalent that was. And it seems we're full circle again with a similar product that's even worse, in my opinion. Um, secondly, so uh, this is a question to Mr. Slade, and maybe I should have asked it during the budget amendment period, but um, I'm kind of curious about this discovered um, well casing that was unknown. And was there, you know, I don't really understand necessarily what was all involved in there, but I hope there wasn't any real danger to public with this unknown hole in the ground and all this kind of stuff. No. So if on Ironton drive, there used to be a booster pump station at the bottom of the hill next to the canal and used to pump water up the hill. So this predates me. I don't know when they abandoned it. Um, but the old building was there and, when I started in 99, the police department was using it to store evidence and other things and files until the roof started leaking. And it's just been sitting there forever. And so the maintenance crew decided it's time to, what do they call that, an attractive nuisance or whatever the term is, get rid of it and tear it down. Well, it's a, just a square block building. And on the inside, one of the corners was kind of blocked in and cased. Strange. No one knew. But when they tore it down, behind it was a casing that stuck out. So it wasn't exposed to the public. But when that was built, they purposely hid the casing. And, I, you know, I don't know when that was built in the 70s or whatever, but it's a, uh, I can't think of the diameter, it's six inch or eight inch casing that's about 50 feet down. And so it's been capped now because the building's down. Um, and this money here will be able to get a well driller to go in there and properly decommission it and abandon it so that it's not a hazard but yeah it was quite a surprise to find that behind a wall that no one knew about well thank you for that i mean when i initially read it at home it was kind of amusing but then when we were talking about it here during the budget amendment i was like wait a second that that could have been dangerous and so i just wanted to bring that up and see what your what your report was so thank you very much for that no bags of money hidden behind the vault mm -hmm. wall <laughs> unfortunately no council member moran Thank you. Uh, first off, I want to extend congratulations to Mr. Slade. Congratulations again on your BFCOG TAC position. It's good to have us in uh, leadership there in BFCOG. Um, I will also say at our last BFCOG meeting that we had on uh, last Friday, we had a discussion about the regional bicycle plan that BFCOG um, puts together. 
And there are going to be two meetings after the one that is happening tonight. They're having an open house for the regional bike plan. And uh, the meeting tomorrow is going to be at the Richland Library from 5 to 7 p.m. And the meeting on the 21st is going to be at the Kennewick Library on Union from 5 to 7 p.m. So if you're interested in the regional bicycle plan, I encourage you to attend the open house that they're having uh, tomorrow on the day after, I think. Yeah, today's is already done. Uh, next, um, I wanted to let folks know that the slides and the recordings that are created from the BFCOG meetings are now on the website. So if you'd like to see the meetings that we've had previously, they do have those up. Um, and uh, luckily, we also have the new bylaws and everything else that we've approved recently regarding the BFCOG uh, finally put onto the website because all 13 regular members have now officially approved the interlocal agreement. So that was very exciting to hear. Um, also at BFCOG, they, uh, we have passed the requirements for paying for a temporary grant navigator that is using um, about half of the funds, a little bit less than 100K hopefully, are going to come out of what's left over from their ARPA funding. And the other is going to come from the PUIDA, which is the Public Works Economic Development Act grant that we have available. Uh, it's for a two-year contract and it'll be able to help the regular member cities like West Richland, if we need help with any grants, trying to find them, helping to write for grants, things like that. So hopefully that'll take something off of the staff needing to do that. Um, oh, and another thing, I just want to let folks know if they hadn't read the news, that there is a new change that looks like it should be going through for the legislative district for Washington State. So it, I did look at it. It looks like West Richland is once again going to be changed, and now we might be split in half between the 8th and the 16th. So those in the south part of West Richland might be in the 8th again. So keep an eye on that. I think that actually starts for this election year, but you might want to verify because I haven't seen any official maps put out. If we've heard of that rumbling as well, but they, the 8th and the 16th, they get us both. They, they, they can put all the lines they want in there. It don't make no difference. We, we've got their number. It's all good. I'm going to move to Council Member Bloom so I don't forget him as we move on this evening. Council Member Bloom, you have the floor. Uh, yes, uh, I just wanted to pass along, like I said before, the uh, last transit meeting, um, the uh, sales tax came in a little short for the year, uh, which is really representing the overall uh, Tri-Cities economy. The um, second uh, piece is uh, we are negotiating to uh, improve some of the paratransit um uh, services. We've had some difficulties with uh, not having available drivers due to various vacation sickness and that kind of things. So we're looking at expanding uh, some of the door-to-door -door services use, utilizing the VIA, uh, which is the BFT Connect, those smaller vehicles, uh, as a backup to those systems when they, they uh, aren't or when we don't have sufficient staff to uh, hit the road. Um, but it was interesting. We had a presentation and today, and I just want to stress that today, if you are disabled, VIA can come pick you up. And so um, there is there there is about 25% of the Connect fleet have the capability of picking up a wheelchair. So uh, that was surprising. We've we've actually had over 500 um, the, of those services this year, or this past year. So, um, uh, and that's an on-demand type of service. So that's uh, uh, as compared to Dollar Ride, which is a scheduled service. So that's, that was um, an enlightening uh, aspect that came up at the meeting. Um, and um, as I've sent by the email, I will not be able to attend the the April 9th workshop because I will be at the transit uh, conference in Washington, D.C. I believe I'll be the only representative from BFT going. Um, and uh, it's, it's somewhat important for BFT to at least have their 
their voice heard of, of the needs for the federal funds that we get, which is um, a significant part of why there are buses on the street. So uh, I will try and virtually uh, uh, attend as I can. Thank you, Councilman Bloom. Appreciate it. Move on, Councilman Number Smart. Oh, yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, first, I just wanted to thank those with their comments. I always find that interesting. Uh, I, I learned something tonight, and so I appreciate your time and effort to bring those facts to Council's attention. Um, and I, I just, I, I don't know. I just will make the comment that I, I think it's very helpful to help the community and Council understand the, the dangers of expanding access to marijuana in West Richland. Um, on another note, um, I, I think it's great that we've got the police department storage facility done. Uh, love to see some pictures of that, or maybe even go out and take a, take a gander. Uh, what's the status? What can we do there, Chief? There's still cement to be poured out front of it, but um, once it gets completed, then yeah, I have no problem posting on Facebook. Awesome. Thank you. Appreciate that. Look forward to it. Council Member Hayes, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just want to remind everybody um, of the Tri-City Veterans Cemetery Town Hall meeting that's coming up May 22nd from 10 to 12 at the West Richland Police Department. Thank you, Chief, for hosting that meeting. Um, and the VA um, Veteran Affairs out of Olympia wants to thank you also um, for providing the space for them. So this should be a, an exciting meeting. Right now, we're looking at over 100 people that are interested in coming and taking part of this. And we really look forward on being able to put together and bring a veteran cemetery to the region. So thank you. Mayor Pro Tem Brink. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, good evening, everyone. Those of you that are here and present, sat through the meeting, and also those attending online. Uh, last week was a busy week for me. I was in Washington, D.C., as I mentioned in the meeting prior. Uh, went to attend the National League of Cities City Congressional Conference at the nation's capital. And I'll just mention again, the Association of Washington Cities paid for this trip, so saving saving our city's monies. But I uh, had the opportunity to um, uh, sit down uh, ourselves and other delegates from Washington State with our two senators, uh, Murray and Cantwell. Also, I had an audience with uh, Representative Newhouse, which uh, was one of the things that I really wanted to talk about. We mentioned the Veterans Cemetery in the, uh, in the area. And also I spoke to him about some of the uh, challenges facing our EMS and fire service uh, first responders with regard to radio communications as they operate on an antiquated VHF system and law enforcement in the Tri-Cities area generally operates on UHF trunk system, with the exception of Franklin County, of course. They're also on an antiquated system. So I was uh, optimistic with my conversation with uh, uh, Representative Newhouse in that regard. Um, Thursday, I'm going to attend the annual leadership conference uh, sponsored by the Blue Mountain Council, Boy Scouts of America. Uh, that's always a great event. And Friday, I'll be attending the state's Washington uh, Forensic, the state of Washington's Forensic Investigations Council. So I just want to let you know you're getting your money's worth out of me for the for the monthly salary that we get as council members. <laughs> Thank you. That's why they call it a stipend, right? <laughs> yeah, and I too was at a conference, waste management conference in Phoenix, and uh, being that we have the largest uh, uh, legacy cleanup site in the nation and uh, probably worldwide, uh, it was uh, keyed on a lot of Hanford uh, topics, so it was a very, very good conference as well. Uh, and so with that, everybody's keeping busy. And uh, Roscoe, I appreciate what you're doing, as well as all the council members with their boards and commissions that they, they work in. A little extra flying miles never hurts you, does it, Mayor Pro Tem? Of course not, Mayor Gary. <laughs> <laughs> okay, with that, we will go ahead and adjourn this meeting at 714. Thank you. <laughs>